Ahem. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of the Thousand Year Door. An awfully long time ago, in a strange and far-off land, a big, bustling town thrived. It was a town where all people lived very happy lives, and it was said that the town was very prosperous. But one day, tragedy befell this blessed place. A great cataclysm struck the town and its people. Darkness filled the skies and the earth roared and shook. It was as if the very world had come to a violent end. But in a single night, the town sank into the depths of the earth. Many moons rose and set. Stories of the town passed into the pages of fairy tales, and when the town's site no longer held relics of its past, people gathered at that spot and built a new town. But word soon spread among the people who moved in that an ancient city lay deep underground, and that a magnificent treasure rested there. Indeed. This is the tale of the fabled treasure of Roqueport. Yes, this is where it begins, in the sea town of Roqueport. The tale for the quest of legendary treasure and the thousand year door starts here. Finally, I have a minute without Toadsworth watching over me. He's so paranoid. I come all the way here on holiday only to be stuck with Toadsworth. It's so stifling. Once in a while, I'd like the chance to look around on my own and see what I want. But now that I'm doing it, all I see is that this town has a very, uh, distinct flavor. Oh, Missy! Missy! Do you mean me? Yes, you, Missy. Won't you buy something? I have a wide assortment of knickknacks and doodads. Oh, well, uh... Well, that's a pretty box. What's inside it? It's said that this box holds a map that shows where a legendary treasure sleeps. But the box has a magic lot on it that will only open for a pure and noble heart. As you can see, it won't budge so much as someone as myself touches it. Oh. I know. If the box will open for you, Missy, then you may have whatever is inside. I am sure that whatever is in it would be no use to someone like me. So, Missy, take this box in your hands and see what happens. Uh, alright. What's the harm? I'll try to open it. Hey guys, it's XN Shadow, and welcome to Let's Play Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Yeah, um, I did hype this Let's Play up quite a bit, so I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, here's the title screen. We can see a little brief glimpse of what we're going to see. Some of the party members, we know Bowser's in the game, so yeah, let's start it up. <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, yes, um, this is one of my all-time favorite games. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, like, all-time Top five, probably top three uh, favorite games that I can just replay again and again and never get bored. W one of those types of games. I love this game to death. I don't know it quite as well as Paper Mario 1, but I do think it's a better game than Paper Mario 1. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is a must-play game. One of the very best on the GameCube. Pick it up. I, I swear you'll you won't regret it. So anyway, we've got a Paper Mario 1 cameo here. That's Pyrocarry from Paper Mario 1. He was one of the partners. So yeah, uh, only a brief uh, cameo, but you know, it's nice seeing him, knowing that we are indeed in the same universe. The games are going to follow somewhat of the same rules and the same formula. So that's always nice. Anyway, uh, Luigi's still being a freeloader, living in my house. Yes, it, it is Mario's house. It has the word Mario on it. You freeloading son of a bitch. Wait, if he's a son of a bitch, that means I'm a son of a bitch too. Never mind. Anyway, Princess Peach sent us a letter. 
She's pretty much saying, Hey Mario, I found a treasure map. Wanna come help me? Too bad, you're gonna come help me. So, anyway, yeah, um... She's included the map with this letter. I'll beat you at Rogueport. That means you must come. Peach. Well, at least there's no bullshit promise about cake this time. At least I'm not being lied to. So anyway, yeah. Oh my god, a piece of paper. Yeah, um, this map, it shows the map of the world that we're about to go through. Though it's not really showing us any treasure at this point, uh, but, eh, whatever. Uh, it's usually, this is supposed to be cryptic and stuff, so whatever. And we've got our title screen. Again. I don't know why games do that. I mean, I guess it's supposed to be for the cinematic approach, but eh, we have the title screen on the title screen. We don't need it again. So anyway, here we've got our prologue. A rogue's welcome. Oh, huh, that's odd. We see Mario, Peach, and Bowser. I expect that, but what's that little X thing with the glasses there? Huh. That's odd. Well, I'm sure it's nothing important. Uh, and, of course, we have to start our game off with a character waking up from being asleep. Mario, Link called, he wants his gimmick back. So anyway, yeah. Ooh, there's Rogueport. That looks like a great town. It's probably full of wonderful people, and it's probably a nice, clean, well-run, awesome town. Yeah. Uh, it didn't look like we were getting any closer there, though. It looked like we were just bobbing up and down. Uh, 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 oh. Oh, uh, uh, maybe we should move somewhere else. I'm pretty sure Peach wouldn't be here. I apologize, sir. Our arrival was delayed a bit by rough weather. Are you sure you want to disembark here? I did tell you the sword tales about Rogueport on my way here, did you not? Uh, what's that? I'm sorry, you say there's a princess waiting here for you? I is that so? Er, of course, sir. Well, if that's what you think, then I won't stop you. But, uh, you better be careful, sir. Don't say I didn't warn you. Look at that, the boat flipped like a piece of paper. Yes, Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door actually emphasizes the paper part of Paper Mario, as opposed to Paper Mario 1, where it was sort of just Sprite Mario. But anyway, yeah, we don't really have a lot to start off with except the mailbox there. But we do have our hammer to start off with, which is nice. Uh, we don't have to find it like in the first game. Anyway, over there, the little glowy rainbow road block with the S on it, that's a save block. What Essentially what it does is you jump on it, you can save. They're frequent. Uh, I mean, pretty frequent. You can generally find a few in every town. There's a few on the roadways. There's a few in the dungeons. You don't generally have to go too far without, ha without a save point. So if you have the patience to look for a save point, you'll find one relatively quickly. I mean, if you're midway through a dungeon, you'll have to backtrack a little bit, or just push your way through, but, you know, it's never anything too bad. But anyway, who's this purple guy over here? Got a cool cape, though. Buh, buh, huh, huh. Boys, we're taking this firebrand to our fortress. As you command, Lord Crump. Uh, oh. I guess they're the bad guys, then. I mean, they're just kidnapping a Goomba, which have been my enemy since the beginning. Uh, maybe I should help her, you know. Hmm. I wouldn't meddle with the other people's problems in this town, even if I had an extra life. <laughs> I love the writing in this game, it's hilarious. They break the fourth wall, and it's funny, and the, it's just well written, and I love the translation job on this game. I, I mean, like, I couldn't even tell that this is a translation, it's done so well. Gah, it's always something. Looks like I'm gonna have to give you a little taste of the old crump -a bomb Anyway, here we have our tutorial battle. Um, battles work very similarly to how they did in Paper Mario 1. Uh, you attack by either jumping or using your hammer, and you can use the action commands to increase the amount of damage you're doing. Like, for example, you press the A button right before you hit an enemy with the jump command, and you'll hit them twice. If you don't press the A button, you'll only do one damage. Uh, you can also do use the action command to deflect enemy attacks, but I, did I failed to do it that time. We're using the hammer here. Now, you have to hold left for the three, first three dots and let go when the star dot lights up. If you do that, you do two damage instead of one. As you see there, I dodged an attack there. It said nice. If you press the A button right before the enemy hits you, you can take a point of damage away. So yeah, uh, battles in this game, they're very dynamic, very fun. The battle system is one of the best parts of the game. It's just, it's, uh, most of the time when I play an RPG, I don't really like the battles as much as, you know, exploring the world and listening to the story and talking to the characters. In Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, I love the characters and the world and the story, but I also love fighting the battles because it's fun to do. 
It's go time! Oh my god, look at all those sprites. We'll never be able to get out of here. Mario, couldn't you just walk out of the way? I mean, they are jumping, so there's got to be plenty of room for you to walk out. Uh, Ma oh, oh, yeah, see, we can just walk out of the way. They didn't even do anything to us. Awesome. <sighs> what a bunch of lose. Let's just sneak out of here, what do you say? So anyway, yeah, you can stand here as long as you want, and they won't do anything. See, look. So yeah, you can just run away. The only way to go is up, so go north to the main, uh, the main central hub of the town. But, huh? Stop! Actually, stop! P -p 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 uh, shit, they're gone. <laughs> Where'd they go? Uh, you, Johnson, did you see them? Did anyone? Eh? Uh, crud, they bolted. Uh, that's Lord Crump, we'll be seeing more of him later. Not the most competent fellow, I notice. So anyway, yeah, here we are, Rogueport Central Hub, Main Square, Town Hall, something. Uh, she's got to give us a roar. Ugh, the fan fiction has already been written. Anyway, this is Goombella. She's a college student. I didn't know they actually had education in the Mario universe, but whatever. So anyway, she doesn't recognize that I'm freaking Mario, you know, the most famous person in the entire world. Saved it like eh, 2,000 times. So anyway, yeah, I, knew, I know this place is called Rogueport, and I should have expected it to be some sort of sketchy place, but I mean, I didn't expect it really to be a sketchy place. Oh, and if you look in the back, you'll see a little scene going on here between those two Pianta guys, and, oh my god, a piece of paper, it's so special. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, um, those two Pianta guys in the suits, they'll be doing a, a little scene with some other guys in a second, like, right about now. See, look, they're beating those two other guys up. Which is funny, you know, that all happen occasionally. Not too often, but occasionally. It helps make the world seem a little bigger, I guess. So anyway, yeah, uh, here's Toadsworth. And she told you she'd meet you here in Rogueport. Actually, I should probably not try to do Toadsworth's voice. I really can't do it. Though, I do like that sprite of him. Hmm. So anyway, yeah, they didn't actually stop here. They were just getting fuel, and then... Uh, Toadsworth took her eye off the princess, and then she's been kidnapped. Oh, wait, I guess we shouldn't assume she's been kidnapped, because nobody's told us, but... Okay, everybody, let's just be serious here. Name a time when Peach isn't kidnapped. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. You know, it's like, if she's missing, it's better to assume that she's kidnapped and be wrong than not assume she's been kidnapped and then look like an idiot again. So anyway, Toadsworth tells you about the inn where you can rest and fill up all your HP. However, unlike the first Paper Mario game, going to the inn actually uh, uses up money. Uh, in the first game, you could go to a Toad's house, Toad's house and then you could uh, refill your HP for free. In this game, uh, HP restoring stuff like heart blocks and uh, inns uh, cost money, which is different. I'm not sure if I like that change better, but you don't really need to replenish your HP too often, so it's not that big of a deal, and you're not spending your money on a lot of things anyway. So anyway, Goobella is going to tell us how to find the treasure, so she actually becomes our first party member. She's essentially the counterpart to Goombario from Paper Mario 1. She, uh, her most important ability is the Tattle ability. And I'm going to say right now, I'm going for a pretty much complete Tattle log. I'm going to show the Tattle log for every enemy that you're going to run into throughout the course of the game. Or every enemy that you'll likely run into for the course of the game. She can also give you certain little hints if you press the X button in an area. Like if you're in a room for a puzzle and you're kind of stuck, uh, take out Goombella and then press the X button. She might give you a little bit of a hint that'll tell you how to get pop by. And if you press the X button when you're near a person, she'll give you a little uh, a summary of who they are, what their name is, uh, what they like to do, and some of it can be funny. Uh, she, uh, in battle, she's almost exactly like Goombario from Paper Mario 1, so uh, she's actually pretty useful. She's one of the uh, partners we'll be seeing the most of throughout the game. Not the best party member, but she's good, especially for when you get her. So anyway, yeah, um, ooh, a, a gallows. Yeah, I don't like the so size of that. Uh, anyway, yeah, uh, this is Rogueport. Kind of a run-down piece of shit town. <laughs> anyway, uh, here's the sign. I don't look at it every time, but it's here. Something funny is written on it after every chapter, so... Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But anyway, uh, that's about it for this part. Uh, next part, we'll be finding Professor Frankly. I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.